I'm Steven Progress. I'm here with Mitch Heiner, and we're going to be looking at the Rainbird Smart Controller and uh, go over the benefits and why you would be interested in possibly changing your unit over to this. And what's the major benefit to this controller system? The major benefit is that, uh, first of all, it saves anywhere from 30 to 70 percent on your irrigation water. So you get a return on your investment on this unit very quickly. Uh, but the other benefit is that you go in and you program it once, you tell it a lot of specifics about your landscape, and then you leave it in auto, close the door, and you never touch it again. It's a self-managing system that's reevaluating every 45 minutes and does all the thinking for you. So you can concentrate on other things while your landscape continues to thrive. Well, I know that's a really big uh, benefit because I just got my water bill a few weeks ago and I was shocked at the, as to how much it went up from last year. And uh, in my bill, it also said my water bill's going to go up again next year. So I think this is a prime time to be looking at water savings. So let's go take a look. Well, we're here to look at the controlling unit right now with the Rainbird system, and I'm going to pass it off to Mitch to go over all the benefits of this Rainbird system. Great. So this is the ESP SMT. SMT stands for Smart Controller. Uh, this is a new addition to our lineup just in the past six months. Uh, and the beautiful thing about this system is that it's a self-managing system. You put in the input once, and then it reevaluates every 45 minutes what the plant uh, water needs are. So it does everything automatically. The first thing that you do is you put in your date and time like any controller like it has a reference point. Second thing you, that you do uh, is you put in your zip code. It has historical 10-year uh, averages for the whole United States for humidity, wind speed, and solar radiation. So you put in your zip code. You tell it if there's any restrictions in your area, uh, water restrictions. You know, some people can't water even days or odd days. You tell it if there's a specific day that you want off every single week for a mow day, uh, and then you set that thing up. The second thing you do is you tell it what are the specific requirements for each individual zone. So for instance, for zone number one, you tell it what sprinkler type are you using, right? Basically what's the precip rate. So that would be like a rotor or a spray head or a drip. Exactly. Okay. So it gives you the choices of sprays, rotors, rotary nozzles, bubblers, drip, or if you know the exact precip rate that you're dealing with, you can put that information in. You can also do an individual zone as time-based only and not have the ET functions associated with that zone. So if you didn't want, if you wanted to override the system, you could say, I want 30 minutes. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Uh, next, it asks, what type of soil are you dealing with? Okay. Is it sand, loamy sand, clay, silty clay? If you have no clue what it is, you can press help on this, and it's actually going to walk you through the different soil types so that you don't get lost. Well, and one of the other issues with this, too, is we can also help the customer determine the soil type and, and the angle and the precipitation rate. It, because most people are not going to understand that. We, we have no problem with going out and, and analyzing that for you. Exactly. Uh, and basically wants to know how quickly or slowly is that water percolated through the soil. Okay? So next, we're going to go to slope. Now, the reason why the third question is slope is depending on how fast you're putting the water down. And then, uh, secondly, how slowly or quickly that water is percolating in the soil. You could have an issue where runoff is a problem. Okay? And that's why it wants to know the, the slope on that. So for instance, if you have a spray zone with clay soil and you're putting water down really quickly on a slope, you might have erosion or runoff. So it automatically does something called cycle and soak for you. You don't even have to think about it. Cycle and soak simply breaks up that runtime so that the soil can actually absorb it and the plant material has uh, an opportunity to, to use that water. So that's a feature it automatically does for you. So, so by simply changing, your, by inputting slope, it's going to actually program the cycle and soak just for that one watering cycle or that zone? For that individual zone. Wow, correct. that's great. Because yep. a lot of times you have to set the whole system up that way. Exactly. Yeah, it's an automatic feature that you don't even need to think about. That's it's just great. answering simple questions. Uh, next thing it wants to know is plant material, right? What's your water requirement and root depth? Really simple. You have your choices of grass lawn, annuals, ground cover shrubs, desert plant, mixed trees. Uh, or, you know, if you're an engineer and you want to look through the manual and build your own custom plant factors, you can do that. But you can also keep it really simple. Well, that's a big benefit, too, because uh, one of the biggest issues that we have with water use is that people don't know how much water their, their plants will need and how much how to water lawns different than plants. And most, most people will set up everything based on the same rules. They'll put 20 minutes in, whether it's a, a shrub bed or a lawn. And uh, this is really giving us a lot, of, a lot of information that you can just use the benefit of the programming for. Exactly. And it has uh, the water requirements and the root depth predetermined for all these uh, generic type of plant material. But it gets it down so that you can get more water savings 
uh, and, and water the plant material exactly when it needs it. So after you do plant type, uh, of course it's going to ask you, is it, for instance, if you do grass, is it cool season or warm season, depending on where you are here in the Pacific Northwest, it's obviously going to be cool season. Uh, and how much sun or shade does that zone get? Okay. Um, some zones have full sun and they need a little bit more water because they evaporate that water a lot faster and the plants uh, transpire and use that water a lot quicker. So you use your best, uh, best guess on how much sun or shade that you uh, are going to need for that specific zone. And then next up, uh, is it established or new? If it's established plant material, this controller knows enough information about that specific zone to manage the water budget for you automatically. If it's brand new plant material, you can go in and override it and say, okay, for the next X amount of days to get this grown in, I want to water this many times a day for this much runtime, just like a traditional controller. But the beautiful thing about this feature is that once it gets to that predetermined uh, amount of days to get it grown in, it will automatically go back to the self-managing features of the ET features, uh, evapotranspiration. So if a customer were to have us have progress come in and replant a bed for them, we can go in there, program this to water additionally longer for a certain period of time, and then automatically, without having to have the customer do any input, it will automatically reset to its original watering. Exactly. That's exactly. great. And then from there, uh, you accept it, and that's how you set up an individual zone, right? Uh, zones are, uh, well, first, just to let you know, this specific unit allows you to do 13 different zones, okay? And you're going to have zones that are exactly the same. So there's a copy and paste feature for this. Uh, Progress is, is very well aware of it and how to use it. But to save time on getting this set up, you can say zone number one that I just set up is the same as five, seven, and nine, okay? Or you can go into advanced user entry and just tweak individual things. But the setup for this is very simple to do. Um, and once you get it set up, the beautiful thing is you can just put it in auto and leave it in auto year round. Okay? It reevaluates every 45 minutes what the water needs are for the plants. Um, and um, just by putting this, plugging this thing in and putting it on the wall, it's guaranteed to save a bare minimum of 30% on your irrigation water. So you get a very quick return on your investment with this product. That's great. Well, um, but, uh, the, the unit looks really simple. Actually, once it's programmed, which of course Progress will help you on programming the system, and it's basically it's a smart controller. It, it's doing a lot more than just being a timer, which is what most controllers are. They're no more than just a timer that has the water coming on and off, regardless of what the weather and what the plant demand is. So in most cases, plants are getting dried out in the summer and they're dying, and grass is getting brown in the winter, it's getting or the fall, it's getting too much water. This will eliminate most of those problems.